once when you click you will be getting like this the screen just click right now you will be getting uh, sql server 2017 on premises and probably with the uh, in the cloud two things will be there so this is 180 days free trial version click the download free trial version on premises that, that means on your machine itself if it is wants to work or we need this version so click download free see as soon as you download you will be getting the exe file and you can see here uh, you will find basic custom and follow with uh, download media content like this so we need to entire purpose of this particular session likewise basic is enough it will take very less resources from your machine you can go for the custom also but it will take more resources so i don't suggest that just click the basic button there right please click basic you yeah, click that please observe the steps that we are doing follow the steps if you face any of you, you face any problem please let me know okay and follow the steps and the download and do the installation on your machine simultaneously so that we are all in the same page alien uh, it's me aji i'm waiting for your response i'm waiting yeah okay so you'll be getting like this install location you see here c drive program files likewise it will be yeah don't do anything please until i say yeah okay so so that the other may not get in confusion yeah process. sorry about that so install location you'll be finding you see here evaluation version you are using basically you'll have three important set of versions evaluation version is one which will be going to be useful for you for the entire learning purpose you can use this no problem at all but in once when you go to real time you'll have here enterprise versions you'll be finding mostly enterprise versions will have all set of features which will be useful for the database administration also other than that nothing license aspect point of view it will be varied the amount uh, that you will be going to pay it will be varied with respect to the developer edition and for with the enterprise edition and for with the evaluation version now you will be getting the default location microsoft sql server as a default location it will be now just click install click install so it will be downloading some packages for you and it will downloads the installation packages for you just wait it will start installing those things wait a moment it will be good uh, i will be going Kalyan. to help you all just wait select please on premises not cloud yeah yeah please ajee kalyan ajee uh, i'm waiting for your response i'm not doing anything actually uh, ah yeah, yeah please don't do anything uh, wait it is uh, since it is a other uh, i mean uh, not a windows machine we need to have a different set of setup we can't do all set of stuff in that okay wait. thank you thank you in my system actually it's you know, like it's uh, visual studio at time i thought that it's not visual c++ is more than 15 right? 64 minimum run time something like that you need to be prepared then then we can't be able to hear you even a single word uh, can you hear me a lot of a lot of background music sound and all you are not able to hear anything please can you type on the chat box Okay, okay. Rocky Patel, please click on premises. If you need any help, please type in the chat box. Now you'll you'll be getting downloaded with an exe file. Okay, yeah, please fill up that particular name, email and address and all and click download now button on the bottom.
okay the it is downloaded successful you can see it is installing now now go to this it will installs in your machine right now wait for 5 to 10 minutes the software will be installed successfully on your machine any of you face any problems still please let me know Please let me know if you are facing any problem. Ajmal, Rakhi Patel, Rohit, now. Rohit, are you able to? Yeah. Any problems? Please let me know. Yeah. So you'll be getting a screen like this. Installation has completed successfully like this. Okay. 
just click install SSMS. Don't do anything, just install SSMS. Now it will be downloading the SQL Server Management Studio for us. Now just click this SQL Server Management Studio. SMS, SSMS, we have to download separately. Otherwise, we need to download separately. If you have not clicked that, you need to download separately. Okay, automatically, the moment you click that download, here, you see, as as and when I click here, automatically it starts downloading. You see here, install SSMS, immediately it will. If I click connect now, you will be connected with uh, a command prompt. Command aspect point of view, it will be. But we don't need command aspect point of view. We need a, a interface to work with. So to work with that particular aspect point of view, what we do is we will be using this uh, SSMS. Okay, SQL Server Management Studio will call. If you are going to work, uh, if you want to work out everything in command oriented part of management, then go for this. Okay. This sort of thing is a little bit difficult, to so that is the reason why it is not suggested. We need uh, the interface. We are working up with the interface. Now, click that uh, setup, SSMS setup uh, hyphen UNU, followed with EXE, please. You can exit, type exit there in that button. Press enter. Now go to this SSMS setup uh, ENU on the bottom. You can close it. You can close it. Close. Yeah. Say yes. Now click SSMS setup. This one. Yeah. That's it. Oh, above. Above. Yeah. That's it. It's opening. This way. So we click install. Okay, see here Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. Whenever you are working out, normally how it will be going to uh, is uh, this is how it will be. See here, I'm having 14, 8. 5, 17 request. You'll find here SQL Server 2012. Okay, you see, open it. Just select this SQL Server Management Studio 17. Click it. Then it will open for us like this SQL Server Management Studio. The version is 17.6. Here is uh, the server name. Server name means your system name. And this is what we'll call as an instance name. This is what we'll call as an instance name. The default instance will be SQL Express or MS SQL. Depends upon uh, the one that you have selected. So, And you'll find the Windows authentication and the SQL Server authentication, Active Directory, Password Integrated. Provided if you are using 2017 only, the other options will be visible. If you are using with any other version, like 12, uh, 14 or followed with the other versions, you won't have Active Directory, all these sort of versions at all. Only the first two options will be present. Windows authentication means if you are having a Windows password, same will be applied to SQL Server also. Whatever the password that it is there for your Windows, the same will be applied for the SQL Server also. Automatically, it will log in. 
for you. SQL Server authentication means you will be providing your own set of username and password so that you can log in. Generally, in projects, what happens is HR department is there, finance department is there, and followed with the, the sales, marketing, request departments are there. For HR aspect point of view, the people who are working in that, so suppose some five employees are, are existing in HR. So for each and every member, I will separately create one username and password. I will give it to them so that they can use or they can log in by using that username and password. It's like the events when you go to your office, you will be using your swipe card. That means individual it is in the same aspect point of view. Here also SQL Server authentication is one where each and every user will have his own username and password so that they can log in. The SQL Server authentication will be created by administrator. The advantage with respect to SQL Server authentication is each and every user can have separate separate username and passwords. That is the difference between Windows authentication and SQL Server authentication. Both of the, the one will have the security, no problem at all. Highest set of security will be going to be existing in both the machines. Next. Windows authentication. See, remember this is instance name. Instance means instance is one which invokes the databases to start action. Instance is one which invokes the database to start. So click connect. Okay, so like this. So as soon as you click connect, it will be going to have like this manner, a different set of version and followed with the things it will be visible. The databases, I'm having few different databases that we are using security server objects replications high availability these are the other set of stuff you will be going to have more the latest version more and more ram is required if it is a little bit older version 2014 or followed with the one less amount of ram less amount of space less amount of uh, the uh, space for installation for all will be there Okay, so this is what about this one. Now let's understand first architecture of our SQL Server. How actually the SQL Server will work, in what manner, internally how it is working out. Some basic set of things, let's understand here. This how actually the database architecture is, what is actually the database uh, will be going to have, and uh, for with, uh, what are the different uh, installations that we are having. So oh, what are uh, uh, the needed sort of database uh, settings that you need to have? What are the system databases that you will have? Some basic set of concepts before going to our SQL. Let's understand first. Okay. If I'm going anywhere faster or if you are unable to hear or if you are not able to understand or any concept you are not able to follow, Please kindly bring to my notice so that we can work out once again on that. Okay. Ali, Thank you. Ali, you. Yes, please. I'm yes, using please. Mac Pro, but <clears throat> I'm using Mac actually. So mm -hmm. the process yeah. you are saying, uh, it's not applied to this, right? It's working straight away. Once if I open, yes, uh, yes. It's asked me to connect. I connected. The, it's showing table view, programmability, that's the stuff. See, when you are working out with the, the other. Okay, mm -hmm. they have provided straightforward the set of stuff. Okay. No need for you know, all these set of stuffs likewise. But learn this. And so when you go in real time, not all the machines won't be having the Mac or not all the times you'll be using with the Linux set of versions likewise. The okay. one that you are working is Linux version. Okay, 
So remain, remaining all other things, the concept, everything, it is same. No issues onto this one. Okay. So let's understand how the architecture of our SQL Server will be. Uh, I hope you all have this particular software installed on your machine. Baba, Ajmal, Chandan, and uh, Rocky, uh, Rohit, like, dot, dot. Now, let us first understand the architecture of our SQL Server. Assume this is your client. This is your server. This is very simple architecture. Architecture of SQL Server is very easy to understand and very easy to remember to us. Assume that this is client. Let us assume I myself. And uh, this is server. This is existing somewhere in uh, London or some Singapore or probably the other other country it is. I have requested one query, some question. Then immediately that query will be passed to the server. The server will have one engine that is called as database engine, DE. Database engine. And here you will have relational engine. And another one that you will have is storage engine. As soon as you send a query, a query will be sent to the server. A server will have an engine that is called as database engine. In that one, you'll have relational engine and storage engine. Whatever the query that you have given, it will be reached to the relational engine. The relational engine will prepare an execution plan. In other words, it will check whether the query has been given in a proper format or not. Any uh, errors are existing, syntactical errors are followed with the one. It will thoroughly check. The relational engine will thoroughly check whether you have given properly the needed set of rules and regulations have been followed or not. It will be thoroughly checked by means of this relational engine. Then this relational engine, after checking all those sort of stuff, fine it is, then it will converse that particular one to a machine understandable format by using a compiler. And since that particular compiled set of uh, code information to the storage engine, to store, to store or to process further, the storage engine will it, will, it will send the information to the storage engine. Once again, I repeat, the client will be sending the information to the server. The server will be going to have the database engine. Inside the database engine, the relational engine and storage engine will be there. The relational engine will take the particular query first and processes the query checks whether the details have been given in a correct form or not. Then it will compiles and stores in the form of a machine language and sends the information to the SE. This storage engine is uh, the one where the data will be going to be stored in the form of records in the form of records. In the sense, 
the rows and columns as per point of view it will be going to store in other words this records you uh, people will call as a data row it will be going to call it as a data row we will be going to call now here uh, comes the another major important set of uh, thing when you are taking up with respect to this uh, one the data row actually furthermore this information it will be going to have storage unit in other words it looks like a normal book normal notebook okay now furthermore let's dig further more onto this storage unit okay so this storage unit will have the information 8 kb size of uh, the records we will be going to make it as a page we'll call it as a page this page will have the information page number page id object id information it will be going to have like our normal text book how you will have index then followed with uh, some pages it will be going to have chapters and followed with an empty pages likewise on the top you will have the page numbers in the similar fashion each and every 8 kb size of the record it will be going to consist of a page these pages again divided into three types of pages one data pages two index pages three free space pages data pages index pages free space pages you have data pages where you will be storing the data in data pages you will store the data in index pages it will have a pointer where it will points to that particular page in free space pages empty pages it is going to have where uh, some set of data will be written in the latter stage or for it it's a free space pages will have yes. data pages index pages free space pages or the three things that you will have in this a collection of again these pages it forms to be the extends this forms to be the extends some collection of all these uh, pages the continuous arrangement of uh, these pages or collection of these pages forms to be the extends where the space will be going to be allocated for uh, storing all these pages actually these extends were again divided into two types one is uniform extend two mixed extend one is uniform extend another one is mixed extend uniform extend means where the data will be stored a similar set of data will be going to be stored all similar set of data say suppose views sequences synonyms tables or that means all uniform object data it will be stored in one location whereas mixed extent where the pages will have different different set of data will be stored it is termed to be as a mixed extent if you, same pages of data same object data is stored uniform extent different different pages different objects data is going to have then it is mixed extent 
these all so again i will collect uh, some set of extremes forms to be the files these files either it will be mdf or ldf master data file log data file mdf or ldf we'll discuss more in brief on to this uh, mdf and ldf further more again a... the collection of uh, uh, yes please oh sorry yeah uh, this is rohit i just have a question you know uh, here you said um, collection of pages extends so you said that uh, same sort of data will be stored in uniform extend and mixed will be uh, i mean different data will be in mixed extend so uh, by uniform ex extends you mean uh, the same format of the tables or the different same sort of data. of data so suppose tables are having some data yeah. tables so, data it is views data are seen in, you see here you are having here you are having database and suppose i am having a, a database that is tables right. this particular related set of tables data i'll store it at one location view okay. system i'll store it at one location so mixer okay. set of uh, set of data i'll store it at one location then it is turned away a mixed extension it is okay yeah, these yeah, are all right. internal activity which will be going to run but if you observe you will have only you you will be going to notify with only the mdf file and ldf file i'll show you uh, the transfers here if you go to our uh, uh, c drive and uh, program files and forward with, uh, with the sql server and concerned uh, database say suppose i'm work concerned with currently ms sql this database if you open it you will find here is the data in this one you see mdf file ldf file backup file mdf file mdf file mdf file mdf files all files are of mdf file you can observe you will find mdf and ldf file whenever you create any database you will be going to have mdf file and ldf file a database will consist of mdf file and ldf file only okay that means basically if you observe our sql server architecture here it will have records a set of records will forms again pages a set of extends again forms pages again set of pages forms to be the files again collection of files forms to be the database again you can observe sometimes file groups you can observe this also file groups logically dividing your database into groups is a file group the same database what i do is i will divide into logical manner into a b c d like that why should i divide i can carry to any other distinct location very easily for the sake so i will allocate in a groups manner so suppose red green blue yellow like that i will create uh, in a groups then the, my data won't concentrate in one location it will be concentrated into four groups so that i can able to easily i can able to map and i can able to get the data very uh, quick than compared to the data other that's uh, the reason why the file groups will be going to there are a lot of usages uh, that we are having with respect to the file groups that are comes under the internal uh, aspect point of view with respect to the database uh, aspect point of view you, you can learn this so this is how it will be going to looks like basically records this is how the architecture of our sql server will be going to look like okay now that you got the database you see just now i have shown to you any database will have like this mdf and ldf file you see I have given here cloud db mdf and ldf file now if you observe here the same will be going to have here also so see here partition 2 and for this is how the exam db cloud db okay this one will be going to have two important set of uh, 
things. Just go to the properties. You can observe oh, how many files are there. You can observe in that um, uh, master data files and followed with uh, the other set of files you can have here. You see here, client DB and followed with the log DB. Let's remove this particular one. So see here, client DB and log DB. Basically, if you observe here, rows data and log data manner, it will be stored. And here is the storage location, the path where it is going to store, it will be going to give us here, MDF file and LDF file. You can divide logically this log file. We'll discuss about more onto this log file. But before that, let us understand the database architecture. OK, database architecture also, let us understand. You can create your own database. So see, select. Now I'll say one simple rule uh, with respect to this particular one. In order to facilitate us, this SQL Server Management Studio interface is given for us. It is very easy to work out with the interface. You Anything that you want to. Suppose you want to create a new database. Select it, right click. Everything it will be going to be there really available for us. Instead of uh, using the command line sort of thing, it is suggestible to use this approach. Most of the times you will be using this particular approach only. Now select the new database. You here okay give some name whatever the name that you want to have so you can specify okay so you will have the file type primary and followed with the one initial size by default the size will be four okay default size will be going to be four mb and here it is initial size it will be one mb default if you are using with the, the older versions you may find two and three likewise also and uh, this is what the logical name is physically here it will be going to store the location okay and uh, here you can specify the name if you have not specified any file name then default uh, the same name it will be going to be taken up here whatever the names that you are giving automatically it will take so. the options and for the file groups so we will be going to discuss in the latter stage it's not required for for the time being currently so it will be going to have like this now click okay So database is going to be created. Now see here the database is created. In the background physically, here it will be going to have. Let's suppose, let's uh, refresh it. And you see here in the bottom, physically it will be going to be created in this location. Here you see, have you observed? It has created in this location for us. Like this manner, the database will be going to be created. Now, once when you have observed in this, you have seen there are two files it is going to create. One is a MDF file and another one is LDF file. We need to understand, let's see some more set of concept uh, with respect to this MDF file and LDF file. But here, Whenever you are going to store some information into this uh, database, it follows one important set of property that is called as acid properties. One, 
acid properties atomicity consistency isolation durability atomicity consistency isolation durability atomicity means each and every transaction that you are going to give it will be processed fully no partial execution atomicity means if you give any transaction that transaction will be processed fully executed fully next consistency consistency means i have done some modification to the parent table then immediately if any child table is related it also will be affected it will also be affected consistency any change or modification is done to parent table or parent immediately it will be reflected to the child if it is related next isolation each and every transaction that you are doing it is independent my transactions that i am doing or whatever the transaction that i am doing are different from the transaction that you are doing or my son is doing or my daughter is doing or uh, whoever it is so that means each and every person's transactions will be going to be different it is not comparable or uh, Uh, each and every transaction will be treated separately that's what the high solution is of durability if suppose i have updated one transaction it should be permanent so suppose if i have done some transaction it has to be permanent it has to be permanent that's what it means suppose i have updated my aadhar card number previously it is not existing now that i have updated it will be permanent or some pan number i have updated or previously i am not having the pan number now i have updated it that is a permanent the transaction is a permanent previously address is not there i have updated that address so it's a, a permanent durability is one where the transaction once it is updated it will be permanent in mdf file how actually the data will be stored in generally then in this particular one we are discussing about the mdf and ldf file request so how actually the data will be stored means basically the data will be stored like this here it is uh, the buffer this is our buffer and this is our ldf file and this is our mdf file whatever the transactions that you are doing initially the transaction will be stored here in this you have two components two compartments one is committed set of transactions and uncommitted set of transactions okay so basically whenever the buffer is full then the transactions will be going to be committed and it will be uh, sent to the ldf file log data okay this log data file will stores the again the committed set of transaction here also it will be going to have and uncommitted set of transactions here also it will have only the committed set of transactions it will be taken up and it will be stored into the mdf file and this particular mdf file is permanent here you will have one checkpoint process will call checkpoint process it will be going to have 
this checkpoint will whatever the data the tp is committed in the before the checkpoint that particular data only it will be taken up and it will be stored permanently into the mdf file once the data that is stored in mdf file until unless you remove or delete or, or, or you say you drop it till the time it will be going to exist why this uh, checkpoint is given means suppose at any point of time the user has given some rollback say example control z control z is placed or some in that set of scenario it has to go back to the previous location so to have that this particular uh, one is used that means the it will be mostly useful for us uh, for recovery process most of the times it will be used for a recovery process so that you can recover the required set of data so that's what the thing happens with respect to our entire mdf file ldf file and project so. now here comes one important note it is not all the times it is not needed this log file will be going to store the information okay whatever the steps that you are committing each and every step wise it will be going to be stored for us that's good but the thing is it is not all the times it is not required for us to have the ldf file without the ldf file also yes i can store directly the information into mdf file but then the problem occurs is sometimes uh, when you want to recover in the little bit difficult uh, to recover your uh, required set of content control so suppose normally you are typing some content and uh, control z button is not working what happens it will be little bit difficult and tough to uh, uh, go back or to uh, go back to the previous set of content in the same fashion this one is also so, so that's how it is when you are taking up with respect to this uh, uh, the storage aspect point of view this is how it will be related now by default the sql server whenever you are going to work with it is provided with default databases system databases default it is provided with distribution master modal msdb temp db or the databases default set of databases that have been provided for us whenever you are going to work with each and every database is having its own set of importance in this particular one please kindly mute yourself all of you if you have any questions you can unmute and you can ask so here you will have master database modal database msdb database temp database likewise master database will store the information related with the mdf file ldf file replication set of data okay replication set of information the server objects the security set of information who else have been logged in the login set of information were all will be stored in this particular master database information suppose i have just now i have created the database when i have created what data i have created what is the mdf file what is the ldf file naming these all set of details it will be going to be created and it will be stored into the master database that means metadata information it will be stored in master data base and next is about the modal database sample database just now these are all the sample databases that we are having a modal database how it will be going to look will be going to be defined by means of this modal database thank you the next comes is the msdb database msdb database is one some jobs you have created schedules you have created schedule sort of things we'll call exactly at so and so time every day it has to take the backups or uh 
I have created some jobs uh, re, uh, related with some backups or uh, followed with replication works likewise internally. That information it will be stored in MSBB. Very very important one, MSDB also. After MasterDB, the MSDB is the key important set of database. Especially this master database and the MSDB database will be useful for administrators more. Every inch, every information, every sort of uh, transaction, sort of information that you are doing, what all will be noted under this master and MSDB. I uh, suppose, assume you have done some transactions and you left, left for the day. As an administrator, what is the work that you have done, when you have done, what time that you have done, what all can be monitored by means of this master database and MSDB database. Why? Because the data about data information, it is going to consist under this. The next is about the TempDB. Temporary operations aspect point of view, you want to do so. Say today, some uh, uh, some sample or testing purpose, as you testing purpose, you want to have some tables, some views, synonyms, something work you are doing. Uh, and uh, okay, for that particular purpose, I will do some ID and follow with the, the databases to you. That database is temp database. You can store the entire set of information in TempDB. As soon as you log out gone the entire information won't be existing just only temporarily so suppose you went to some different city will take some uh, different lodge or follow with some restaurant likewise we'll be going to take and uh, we'll be going to uh, stay there for some hours and then again we will go away similarly here also the term database the information will be stored temporarily as soon as you left that particular ID or uh, you log out and probably with uh, the one, immediately whatever the data and everything will be removed. Start as a new, again, fresh. That's all. That's what the temp DB is. Distribution DB. I can distribute this particular database to other people. I can give this particular database, whatever the data that I have created in that, I can distribute to some another purpose or follow with, then you can go to the distribution database. This is what the databases, system databases. But if you observe, these are all the databases that we are having are user-defined databases. User-defined databases. You can see here diamond and product the GRP, all these sort of uh, stuff are uh, user defined databases. Now, this is about the database, and this is how we have created the database simple database. This is how we should have now. Whenever you create a database, some basic set of things with respect to database we should have to know. Go to properties. Here you'll have general files, groups, options, change tracking, permissions, all these are operations that you'll have. We are not concerned with all these operations. Why? Because some of, of the uh, some of the operations are database operations, database administrator operations, we no need. We need, what is the database? See, this is the database name. Its status is normal. By default, the status of the database will be always normal. We'll have the different set of statuses also. And this is my server name, and this is uh, the user uh, who owns this particular database. When it has created, what date, and for the one, the collation is very important. We know in, in our world, we are having so many number of different, different uh, languages, different set of, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, 
different set of people who will be going to exist they will have their own sort of languages and formats you can select while creating the database you can select your own some japanese some chinese some taiwanese or some other people who are there they want to have their own set of uh, manner some database set of stuff like that they can have it by means of this particular one that's for the collation okay Okay, so here you will have files and you will have the files information you know here. Auto growth will be there. By default, it will be going to have auto growth. Automatically, if once when it reaches to 4 MB sign, automatically it will be incremented to 1 more MB. Like this. As I mentioned to you, file groups, if you are uh, logically you want to divide the same, then it will be and so going to be done so by the file groups. Yeah. Got it? Any question? You can create it here by adding the R file group automatically. You can create, you can create here either way, you can create the one. Click file group, you can mention this. And click OK. The file group is created. In this manner, then what is the purpose and usage of the file groups? So you will be learning in uh, usually it will, you can learn uh, once when you go with the database uh, administration. It will be. Okay, I'll give you one small uh, information to you. Suppose you want to store uh, uh, some, say, I'm having uh, one to thousand. Let us suppose I'm having one to thousand records. First 250 records, I will store it in file group one. The next 250 records in file group two, the next file group three, next file group four. So what happens now? I can able to get the required set of data faster. Suppose you went to some library, you can find all computer science books at one location, all mathematics set of books at one location, sciences books at one location. So what happens with that? You can able to pick that particular books required very much faster, very easy. In the similar fashion, here also, you can do the same if you are having the files. As you are dividing the same database into your logical groups. So that's what the thing with respect to this. Once. So, okay, you have, you have seen about the important set of properties regarding this particular database. Okay, so you can have different set of options here. And this is very important one. Always by default, the database recovery model will be always full. And you are creating a database with respect to 2014 or 2012 or 2008 or whatever the compatibility you can have. Suppose today I have created the 2008 means I can uh, upgrade it to that particular database to latest versions. It is not possible, but upgradation is possible with respect to this. Here you are having the default language and for with uh, the cutoff uh, date, sort of stuff, likewise you'll have. These all things not required for us, uh, only the important set of things that it is required in this particular one is, here you will have the database read-only option. Is it database is uh, not a read-only? Means no one can use that. Okay, you should have to see that uh, it is false, it is set to false, so that uh, uh, people can able to use that particular database. So that is what uh, the important remaining all other things all these options are admin options you have okay
So this is what the database creation is.